Welcome back to Harbour Unboxed. Today we have a different sort of video, but it's one I've been wanting to make for a little while now. In fact, it's an itch I've been wanting to scratch ever since AMD released their Raven Ridge APU series. Now, this is also something many of you have been asking me to grill AMD over for the past few months, but I'm going to go about it a bit of a different way. Okay, so some backstory here first. AMD released their Ryzen CPU series on the new AM4 platform back in March 2017 and over the course of the year released over a dozen new CPUs uh, using the AM4 socket. For this first generation of Ryzen CPUs we got the A320, B350 and X370 chipsets. In the very same year, being 2017, uh, Intel released two new mainstream desktop processor series. First, we got the seventh generation core series, codenamed KB Lake, and with it, we got 15 new standard power desktop parts. Prices ranged from $40 US all the way up to $340 US. Then, less than nine months later, Intel released their eighth generation core series codenamed Coffee Lake, and we now had 14 new standard power desktop parts, this time priced between $40 US and $360 US. Why do I bring this up? Well, because these CPU series, despite using the exact same LJ1151 socket, aren't in any way compatible. Although Intel could have opened up compatibility, they've deliberately blocked it, and this means those wanting to move from, say, a Core i5-7600K to the Core i7-8700K will have to dump their motherboard in favour of a new 300 series board. As it currently stands, Intel's been continuing compatibility for two generations and two generations only. For example, Sandy Bridge and Ivy Bridge are the second and third generation core series are compatible. Then the fourth and fifth generations, codename Haswell and Broadwell, are compatible. And the sixth and seventh generations, codename Skylake and KB Lake, are compatible. This issue has been somewhat lessened by the fact that Intel's offered little to no improvement from one generation to the next. So it wasn't until the sixth and seventh generations came along that those with second and third generation parts started to feel like they needed to upgrade. An issue faced when continuing support by carrying over compatibility to a new generation is supporting those new CPUs on previous generation motherboards. For example, if you purchased a 6th generation Core i3-6100 in late 2015, but in early 2017 decided that you wanted to upgrade and a 7th generation Core i5-7600K looked like what you're after, you'd first need to ensure that your motherboard was up to date before installing the new CPU. Installing a new CPU without the required BIOS would see the system fail to post, otherwise known as power on self-test. This is because the motherboard doesn't recognise the installed CPU. Motherboard makers are generally very fast to add support and often the required BIOS is available for download ahead of the actual CPU release, so it's not really a big deal. However, if you bought a Z170 motherboard which was designed for the 6th gen core series and you bought that with a 7th gen processor, it might not work out of the box and that leaves the consumer in a bit of a pickle. Helping to avoid this scenario, Intel has always released a slew of new chipsets, so it's unlikely anyone would purchase a previous generation motherboard with a new CPU, but it does still happen from time to time. People who run into this issue will need to take their new hardware to a local PC store and hopefully they can update the board, otherwise you would need to send it back to the retailer and have them do it for you. Intel does always go one step further to minimise this issue by eliminating compatibility entirely and starting afresh every second generation. This simplifies things for Intel, it makes them considerably more money in chipset sales and can help to avoid headaches for consumers. That said, the consumer is ultimately worse off with this approach, particularly enthusiasts who are on a budget. Most of you watching this video would have no doubt appreciated the option to upgrade your 100 or 200 series Intel motherboard to support a Coffee Lake CPU rather than get rid of it and forced to spend over $100 US on a new Z370 board. Okay, so to rewind to the start, AMD released Ryzen on the AM4 platform in 2017 and at the time announced that they would keep compatibility till at least 2020. That means multiple generations of processors will be supported on the same socket, not just the refreshes. This is a seriously big deal, and while we've now seen that the second generation Ryzen CPUs work perfectly fine on the A320, B350, and X370 motherboards, this should also be true for the Zen 2 processors, slated for release in 2019. Although AMD will continue to release new chipsets, they aren't mandatory, and this means that the B350 motherboard that you bought last year for $70 US 
will be sticking around for some time to come. If you purchased the MSI B350 Mortar, for example, when it was first released, it would have shipped with an early BIOS version, probably version 1.0 or 1.1. But if you wanted to use the B350 mortar with a Raven Ridge APU, you'd need to make sure it was updated with BIOS version 7A37V1B, which was released two weeks ahead of the APU launch. If you bought this motherboard featuring an earlier BIOS revision with a new APU, it wouldn't have worked. Since AMD didn't release a new chipset alongside the APUs and maintain support for existing 300 series chipsets, most purchased a B350 board, and many of them were older stock, shipped before the supporting BIOS update was developed. AMD's copped a heap of flack over this, so much so they actually had to invest time and money developing a program that could help customers update their motherboards by sending them a cheap AM4 CPU, which could be used to boot the system up and then update the BIOS. In hindsight, it would have been much easier for them to do what they'd done previously with their APUs, and that was to segment the product lines and offer their APUs on a different socket with different chipsets. Ultimately, that approach would have been less of a headache for AMD, but far less convenient for consumers, and I, for one, am very thankful they didn't take that approach. This issue resurfaced with the release of the second generation Ryzen CPUs as people started trying to pair them with B350 motherboards that hadn't been updated and once again AMD took a heap of flack for something they're doing that really benefits all of us. It's impossible for AMD to add support right now for CPUs they're going to release in the future. And Intel hasn't developed a time machine to get around this issue either. The only solution is to axe support after a certain period of time and start afresh, and this is the approach Intel's gone with. We really, and I mean really, don't want AMD to take this same approach. There will be a point in time when upgrading will be necessary to support new features and memory technologies, but until that time, I'd rather not see compatibility removed just so these companies can juice more money out of you. I bet there's plenty of H110, H170, and Z170 owners that would love to stick a Coffee Lake CPU on their perfectly good motherboard. My worry though is that if AMD keeps receiving backlash for continuing support, then I feel like this is something they might just abandon after 2020 and instead adopt the same compatibility cycle as Intel, which sees a CPU series released, then refreshed a year later on the same platform, and then after that point they drop support entirely and start over, forcing you to invest in a new motherboard that might not offer anything new beyond CPU support. As I've said, a lot of people have been attacking AMD over this BIOS update issue, and quite a few of you have been asking me to attack AMD over this issue. But it's not really a situation that AMD's handled poorly, uh, leading to these problems. There is absolutely nothing, or almost nothing, AMD can do to prevent this if we want to see compatibility remain. When new CPUs come out, motherboards need to be updated to support them. This has always been the case for both AMD and Intel. Although there isn't anything AMD can do beyond offer their boot kits, there are solutions though, but they need to come from the motherboard makers. ASUS has come up with one such solution, which they call USB BIOS Flashback. For this method, all you need is a 24-pin power cable connected to the motherboard and a USB stick with the required BIOS. Simply stick the USB storage device into the motherboard's USB BIOS Flashback port, then press and hold the USB BIOS Flashback or ROG Connect button for three seconds. At this point, an LED begins to blink. You just need to sit back and wait till the LED stops blinking, and that indicates that the BIOS has been updated and you're good to go. Unfortunately though, ASUS only offers this feature on their most premium boards and none of their B350 models will support it. Uh, perhaps this is something AMD could work on with their board partners to make a standard Ryzen feature. I do understand this is a frustrating issue, it's just also unfair to blame it on AMD. Those of us who build our own PCs do choose to take on the role of the technician and updating BIOSes is all part of the job. If you don't want to deal with that sort of stuff, then buy a custom built system from your local PC store. You'll pay more, but at least they come with support. Anyway, that is going to do it for this one. I hope you guys didn't mind uh, this different kind of video. Like I said, this is an issue that's been annoying me because while I get the frustration, the alternative is far worse. I'd much rather the inconvenience of having to try and update a motherboard's BIOS opposed to having to buy a brand new motherboard. As always though, I would love to hear your thoughts on this topic, so drop them in the comment section below. Thanks for watching. I'm your host, Steve, and I'll see you again next time.